The Israeli military is mobilizing a record number of reservists, some 360,000, as observers are anticipating a ground operation in Gaza. The IDF is also amassing tanks and other military vehicles near the border with the Palestinian territory and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed retaliation on Hamas like never before. Keep in mind, a ground operation could get complicated. Gaza is very densely populated. It puts civilians in the middle of urban warfare where Hamas can utilize narrow city streets and a complex network of tunnels that can be used to move fighters, store weapons, and launch a series of attacks. We want to discuss the situation now with a military expert who knows firsthand the hazards of urban combat. We're joined now by General Wesley Clark. He was the Supreme Allied Commander of NATO during the Kosovo War. General, thanks so much for sharing part of your afternoon with us. We saw this drone video of Gaza earlier today. This is the aftermath of aerial strikes on the territory. I'm wondering what an Israeli ground operation in this region is going to look like. Well, first of all, they've got to pick the targets. And the way you would probably do this is to section off Gaza, maybe block by block, figure out how to go in, isolate that area and work from the outside in. You've got to work against the tunnel network and you've got to work against snipers and other people on the high ground. Now, you've created a lot of rubble in the city right now, so you've got to stay away from those streets if you're trying to move uh, harm, armored vehicles in there. So that adds to the obstacles there. It, it, it's going to be a very tough, slow, painstaking operation. You've got to do it with maximum protection for your own troops because you have to understand that the Hamas, this is not going to be a surprise to Hamas. They knew that this is what they were going to get. This is what they want. They want to bring that Israeli ground force in and attack it from every direction and put more casualties on it, show that it lacks credibility. So Israel has to do this, has to do it well, has to maintain its military credibility. It's an extremely difficult operation coming up. Uh, General, you described the targeting of tunnels and areas along that border. There were civilians in Gaza that uh, were... Uh, trying or, or rather we're told to evacuate a certain crossing and this Rafa crossing right here and it's been complicated uh, partly because it was targeted um, obviously you mentioned some of the complications regarding a ground operation what about the fact that Hamas is holding some 100 to 150 hostages potentially some American citizens how does all of that the difficulty of getting civilians out and the fact that there are hostages in Gaza alter the calculus for the Israeli uh, Defense Forces? Well, obviously, you'll have teams standing by that could do an emergency hostage rescue operation. If you could identify where the hostages are, if you could get entrance into that area with sufficient force to rescue them. But those capabilities will be there, and we'll be monitoring all the electronic and visual intelligence we've got. We'll be looking for uh, other people talking uh, and communicating people on the ground. We'll do everything we can to locate them. But, you know, it's in Hamas' interest not to execute those hostages. They need those hostages as bargaining leverage at the end. So you're going to hear a lot of threats. You may have some out-of-control people who do want to kill the hostages. But my bet would be that the Hamas leadership will not want to give up those hostages. Now, for the sake of the families of those missing, uh, General, I, I hope you're, you're right about that. Uh, I do want to share with you some new satellite images we have of the Erez crossing complex. So essentially what we're looking at, this right here is Gaza, and this is Israel. This is part of the border, and on it you can see uh, craters in some areas where Israel launched retaliatory strikes. What really stands out to me are breaches in the border wall where Hamas broke through, and you can see them uh, in these circles I'm drawing. This is where Hamas militants were able to get into Israel. It's striking partly because of the scale, General, of the attack. They executed an attack unprecedented in the history of Hamas without Israeli intelligence having a, a clue that this was going to happen. How is that possible? It's possible by just... Uh working with people you trust, keeping the circle of knowledge small, and only talking face-to-face, -face. no electronic communications, nothing in writing that can go out. 
If you do that, you can maintain security. Uh, but you know, Hamas has been there for, for a long time. We cannot underestimate their sophistication. It's a mistake to think that they're just terrorists out there waving AK-47s. This is a sophisticated military force. It's had training. It's had assistance from the Iranians, maybe some Russian equipment in there for all we know. They can monitor communications. They have cyber. They have anti-aircraft missiles. They have anti-tank missiles. Got a lot of stuff buried underground. Uh, they prepared this for a long time. So I think, you know, we have to anticipate this is not like go going when the United States Army raced through Baghdad in 2003, mm -hmm. shattered the Iraqi guards, and uh, the people in Iraq were like, hey, well, some of us liked him, some of us didn't. Uh, let's see what happens now. That's not what this is. This is a fortress area that's been prepared. Now, how many Hamas fighters are there? 15,000, 20,000. We saw maybe 2,000 committed in this operation. So they've got lots of forces left behind and ready and no doubt willing to sacrifice their lives to take Israelis with them. So this is going to be a tough fight. And at the same time, of course, We've got the northern border to worry about. The president's talking about maybe sending an, another carrier battle group in. And don't forget, the North Koreans are now shipping artillery and ammunition by rail to the Russians to put the pressure on Ukraine. We can never neglect that because that fight in Ukraine is very much in America's interest. They're fighting our battle there against Russian aggression.